Hey there, welcome to the On Purpose Podcast with Brian Horvath. I'm your host, Brian Horvath, and I'm really excited about the content you're going to gain or hear today and the leadership lessons you're going to gain from my friend, coach, and pastor, Hal Mayer. Hal and I met years ago when he came into the church I was working at here in Tampa and spoke to us about three questions to ask when you're leading to help those you're coaching get better. And of course, anytime we help more of our leaders get better as a coach, we get better ourselves. And years later, he and I worked together at the same church I was working at then and had a chance to lead some teams together as well. So I'm really appreciate, I really appreciate Hal coming on to the podcast. And a lot of the lessons that he shared with me then and he shares with me on this podcast today, I'm still using today in my coaching business. So thanks a lot, Hal. Well, you're going to be blessed to hear Hal and hear the, the, all the wisdom he's learned from being a coach in sports, a parent a leader at churches, and now a consultant coach and always does a great job speaking. He has a new book that he came out with called The Smart Ask and I'm really excited. Oh, yep, yeah, you heard that right. The Smart Ask. And I'm really excited about what uh, we're going to talk about today when you listen to this podcast. So enjoy, no matter if you're a coach or a leader or aspiring leader, parent, and so on and so forth, you can use these lessons, whether it's in person, face-to-face, in a group setting, on Zoom, or whatever you're going to find value in today's podcast. You can get this book at Amazon. You can learn more about how at howmayor.com. And uh, again, thanks for hanging out and listening. Hi there. Welcome to the Your Purpose Podcast. I'm your host, Brian Horvath, and I'm grateful that you are here investing your time to listen today. The purpose each week of this podcast is to serve people like you and like me to know, live, and love the purpose we've all been created for. Each week as you listen, you're going to discover practical, emotional, and at times spiritual tools to help you know, live, and love your purpose. I'll be sharing from my life in an authentic, transparent, and genuine way, as well as bringing on guests and experts who will share their fears, failures, challenges they had to overcome to succeed, to know, live, and love their purpose. I'm glad that you are here today, and I can't wait to hear from you about this episode. You ready? Let's do this. One of the challenges in feedback, sometimes we're trying to establish ourselves as smarter. Mm. You know, somebody says, well, I I made $10,000 in sales last month. You know, that's pretty good. But when I was doing your job, I made half a million dollars in sales. (laughs) That doesn't motivate anybody, you know? So... Now, I found feedback when it's delivered properly, and it's all about delivery. A quick, another quick illustration. I love pizza. In Memphis, there's a place called the best pizza in town. If you ever go there, get it. It's the best pizza you've ever eaten. However, if I go there and order pizza, and the guy comes out with greasy hairs, sores on his face, and he's holding the pizza on his hand, I'm not eating it. Nothing wrong with the pizza. It was the delivery. Yeah, good. And so often, that's the challenge with feedback. It's not delivered well, so it's not received. Okay, so for those that are married in this, in this, uh, listening to this, how do you deliver feedback about, uh, for example, maybe someone not putting the uh, toilet paper on the roll after they're done? Well, who knows? Whatever. I just pulled that out of nowhere. How? Um, <laughs> how do you do that, man? Well, I'm gonna tell you. In marriage, you've got to be careful. <laughs> Timing is everything. Uh, right? <laughs> Timing is everything. Difference between not. A long foul ball and a home run is time. And uh, the difference between my golf shot and anybody else that can play is timing. Mine goes other ways because my timing's not good. But I, I think in relationships when you're especially close, you have to ask for permission. And Because there's times Sandy will say, can we I said, you know what? I can't talk right now. I, I'm just up to here. Uh, and then I'll let's do it at this time. And that right. works. Because right. invariably... When we were early married, she'd want to talk about stuff when we we're going to bed. Yeah. I'm thinking, I'm going to You sleep. too, huh? <laughs> and she said, well, you don't want to talk about it. I said, in the morning. Well, in the morning, she was waking up. So I'm, I'm an early morning person. She is now. So we had to figure out a time when it was best for both of us to talk. Or else you say things and do things that don't work real well. Yeah, well, my wife says, you're just not getting it. And then I want to say one more thing. <laughs> uh, and that, that's because I messed that up earlier this morning. So that's fresh on my mind. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll bet. Hey, Listen, I, I, I teach this stuff and train it. 
and I still blow it. There, there's no perfection in this. It's just kind of an angle where you start paying attention more, a little more self-awareness. Yes, yes. Self-leadership's a hot topic always. Um, yeah, so so I'm looking at some of the questions. This is why I love having these conversations because in, in, uh, inevitably they're going to come up. The questions happen already, so I'm scrolling down my list. But um, I think one of the things I want to say is what? how do you – you said, you said something earlier about sometimes the coaching relationship or what is the prospective coaching relationship is not the right fit. So for those listening that are in that role, how do we, and, and pride's not an issue where they think they got to solve everything and they're the person always right. and forever. How do you discern whether that somebody is a good fit or not? For me, it's what they want. Okay. Using questions, I can help them develop a strategic plan without knowing their business. However, if they want expertise in that biz business, I'm not your guy. Okay. I was uh, doing a strategic plan with a real estate holding company. Ooh. And they were talking about some new innovations. Where should they go the next year for their uh, primary focus and all that? I don't know enough about real estate. I mean, I've bought and sold numbers of houses. I did that for a little bit. But I'm not your guy on the uh, investment side, understanding all of that. Right. But I didn't have to be, because I can ask questions to get them there. They knew the business well enough. When we came out with a great plan at the end of the day, the challenge is what they want from me. If they're looking for somebody on blocking and tackling, you know, strategic how tos, there's venues I, I know that in, and I can help you. But if you know, you can't use questions. If you, if I had a, uh, if you, if you were getting ready to do open heart surgery on somebody, you had no experience. I don't, I can't use questions to help you go. That's something that takes, you know, specific. That's people always say, well, you can't use questions here. I go, right. But, but what you can use questions are is most of the rest of the stuff we're doing uh, is always can be helped with questions. How do you do this? What would you do if you were to do it different? Uh, what would you, how, what was the best part? You know, our kids, when they were younger, we always used to ask them, what's the best part of uh, vacation this year? Because we wanted to make sure we, we repeated it. It was best for them. Oh, so we're, yeah. I do a thing every year called Camp Poggy. Um, it's, I'm the grandpa now, and I got five grandkids. And on vacation, we've got money with my wife's face and mine on it, and they can earn <laughs> Poggy bucks. And there's a story. <laughs> I know, gratuitous, right? Uh, there's a store at the end of the night that the kids go in and can buy what they want. I love it. The first year, we just took we took all the crap they left at our house and just put it in the store. And <laughs> they ended up going. The last day, I give them all big trash bags, and they take the rest of it because I'm not taking anything home. And now we're going to the dollar store. But it was interesting. Uh, we were talking about just limiting Camp Poggy store to one night. But in questions with the grandkids, that was the highlight. Mm. Getting a chance to take money they earned for good attitudes and all. Not foot rubs, but good attitudes and things like that. <laughs> and then they get to buy stuff in the store. And so here's an interesting response because you never know what they're going to say, obviously. I mean, I do ice cream with pancakes in the morning for breakfast one morning during the week and stuff like that. I mean, you can't go wrong with ice cream with kids. No. Your parents say you can, but I, I've told them, I said, guys, you feed them healthy the rest of the year. One week with me will not ruin uh, But I, one of the grand, other grandfathers, Asked my grandson, Hal's kid, Hal the Fit, said, uh, what's the best part about Camp Poggy's store? He says, you can buy guns and you can buy ice cream. <laughs> of course, the grandfather's from Alabama, and he's thinking, yeah, baby. Well, the guns are Nerf guns or squirt guns, right, and there's right. a plethora of other things. I mean, but that's what he remembers. And so we know, again, I got to make sure I have some squirt guns uh, for, for Camp Poggy this year and uh, plenty of ice cream. No, I love it, man. That's great. Yeah, I saw that on your website, which we're sharing a little bit, the, the Poggy. I was like, I was going to ask him. There you go. You're, you're right there with me. You're ahead of me. I love it. Yeah, my granddaughter, my first grandkid was my granddaughter, and she flipped uh, the pronunciation of grandpa, put the end at the first, pa and then gee, and she started calling me that, and it stuck. I love it. That's good. So That's good. There's no other Poggies out there, so I can own that name. I, I think I'm going to turn it into University of Poggy, and allow them to earn degrees in their teenage years. <laughs> and and I, I'm sorry, I'm just going to be an entrepreneur here. I see a, I see an opportunity here. Just saying. Yeah, there's a website open for it. I've already looked. <laughs> I, heck yeah, man. 
you never know. Seventeen dollars a year or eight dollars a year, whatever it costs to hold a domain, is it's right. worth it. So right. we got a lot of great things we can continue on, man. But I was thinking about a couple of questions that, of course, you know, they they fall in line with leadership. But I think about an aspiring leader. You know, some of the folks I'm coaching now, they're, oh my gosh, I look back and go, oh, what it would be like to be. 28 again or 32 or whatever. And they just got this zeal and this fire and they're leaders. They have that heartbeat. They have that desire. They have that opportunity. They're not quite there. And heck, we've never arrived, I think. But where does an aspiring leader start his Jedi master training? <laughs> What's some tips for yeah, an aspiring uh, leader? Well, let me step back and I'm going to hit that because it plays into it. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons I got into coaching at the level I'm doing now as I was in a uh, church planting retreat, coaching some church planters, and another guy from a very large cho church was talking to me. This is why I was lead pastor at Church of the Bay. He said, you know, you and I have got to come off the stage, and we've got to start pouring into younger leaders, because many of them are fatherless, mm. as far as they've got this huge father wound, whether it's in ministry, they don't have a ministry father, or in life, their own father they don't have a connection with, or they don't know them, uh, or, or in their job relationship. You wouldn't call them your father, but who's your mentor? And so many are, are struggling there, and that's why I got into the, the coaching end. So a young guy, what a deal, you're right. I mean, here, here's what I would tell a guy. Uh, if you want to find a mentor, don't start out asking people to mentor you. <laughs> I want Brian Horvath to mentor me. I'm going to say first, hey, can we go to lunch? When we go to lunch, I'm going to have a list of 10 questions, just like you said. Mm. I ask them, and I'm going to write down. And if it goes well, and I think, you know, this guy could speak to me, I'll text him back later and say, hey, that lunch was good. Would you be available to do it again? I've had guys come to me and say, would you mentor me? I said, yes, but here's what mentoring looks like. You need to come with your pressure points and your questions. I'm not going to deliver content to you every week. And so if I'm a young guy, I would make sure I'm taking notes when a wiser, older guy is talking. By the way, that's one of my things that tells me to don't coach somebody. Right, right. And they're not writing. It's not bad. It's just I must not be saying anything of value to them because they won't write it down. Mm -hmm. Their choice, I don't berate them. But if, if they're not going to write down what I say, I know what they're going to remember. Only about 3% of it. So it's a waste of information. So I, I just don't coach them. However, if they're writing down and they come to questions and hot topics, then I think I've got somebody where we can coach. So that's that's the point I look for in a young person when they're starting out. I would find somebody ahead of me. I mean, I did it with parenting. I found people who I thought their kids were successful in their 20s, and that's who I got my parenting advice for preschoolers and younger children because the challenge is, listen, when it's a preschooler, I can get compliance. I'm grown, right? And when they're in grade school, I can get that. I want to know how they turn out when they're making their own decisions. So that's what, I mean, Sandy and I, when we started, our goal was never compliance. I mean, I'm a pastor, she's Christian. Our goal was godly 35-year-old parents. Yes. So we parented that way instead of the other way. And so when you're dealing with people, find somebody farther ahead than you. I mean, if you're in a, a million-dollar corporation, find somebody in a $5 million corporation, right. a CEO. Get lunch with them. If you're a coach, find somebody who's got a bigger platform than you and get information. But that's where I would start. I would be a reader. I mean, obviously, readers are leaders. I'm reading more now than I ever had because with Audible, I can listen at 1.5 the speed. Exactly. So while I'm driving somewhere, I'm cranking out books, and then I've got several books I listen to several times. But I also read print, obviously. But uh, you've just got to determine you're going to be a learner. And you can't stop. I'm 68, and I read, uh, I think it's 48 books last year. I'll exceed that this year. And the reason is I want to stay sharp enough so I can help the next generation. I, I don't want to just sit back. I mean, I've got an earned doctorate, but I don't want to sit back on what I learned in that. That thing's 30 years old. There's probably mm. not much I learned that's worth much today. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it's good. I, I uh, remember sitting with my mentor. <laughs> it's so funny, funny story. We go to Barnes and Noble. This is after I graduate from Ohio State, and um, Ohio State. Whoa, 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 whoa! Yeah, it's not in the SEC. Yeah, it's in the Big Ten. <laughs> They're the little brother. 
Um, the Big Ten. How, wait a minute. Let me ask you one other question. How many teams are in the Big Ten? Yeah, exactly. See what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm big, a hard time. Big my eleven. Sister-in-law. My sister's a big Big Ten fan. Yeah. Fan. Yeah. It's uh, it is kind of funny um, how they fit that little eleven into the logo now, or whatever it is now. Maybe it's oh, twelve. I haven't seen that. Maybe it's 15. Who knows? Maybe because it changed. I don't know. It just changed two minutes ago. But I remember going there and sitting at Barnes & Noble with a guy that I met through um, his wife at work. I worked with his wife, met him, and he stacks all these books on top, you know, How to Win Friends and Influence People and a whole host of others. And I'm thinking, young, entitled, 20-something, going, this guy's going to buy all these books for me. He's going to be a great guy for me. And he goes, I ain't buying these for you. I'm just saying these are books you should read. We end up leading me to Christ, became the best man of my wedding. How many years later? Oh, I mean, wow. and we still talk today, and and uh, and he's pretty cool. He's a uh, care pastor and elder at his church uh, down in Brandon. What's that big Baptist church? Bell Shoals, uh, here in yeah. Brandon. So it's just pretty, you know, pretty, what, pretty what cool. Are the, what are the huh? things in the local library? Because you ought to join oh, yeah. the local library. Because I'm getting free Audible books and free yep. Kindle type books from them on loan. Where you can save some money there too. So yeah, it's so easy to find with podcasts. I mean, yours is one of the podcasts are more relevant often than the book is because the book's going to come out. It's going to be worked on when it comes out. It's two years old at least. Right. Where a right. podcast is in the moment. Yep. I think I see too. Uh, when I do my LinkedIn training, you can have a LinkedIn uh, learning free account if you go to the library. If you have a library card, and there's some great stuff there too. When it comes to things, there's so many benefits of what we think is yeah. old school. It's still definitely in school. Um, so how a couple more things let's think about. It. So, you know, you, you mentioned a couple of times and I'm glad I even wrote it down. It's like, is there such thing as an expert coach? Say that again. Yeah. We talked about it a little bit. Expert coach. I, you know, I mean, obviously there's some great coaches. I guess there would be an expert. I always, when I think of an expert, I think of an X is a has been and a purred is water under pressure. So, you know, that, that doesn't really okay. go well. But, it, you know, I, I don't know if expert means you can coach everybody because I don't believe that's the case. Right. But uh, I think there's coaches out there who, who do very well in situations. I mean, you wouldn't take a football coach and make him a basketball coach. They did that in my junior high, and the guy – is having us do end around plays with a moving screen. You, you can't do that. So I, I think there's some lanes some coaches operate better in than others. I think the best coaches are ones who are going to be more question oriented than answer oriented. Mm-hmm. I mean, if it's a uh, if it's somebody who's just delivering information, then there are consultants, and that's fine. I mean, there's a role for consultants too. Obviously, the, the lane's wide open for a lot of this right now. So uh, I, I, expert, I, I guess, but I don't know how, I, it depends on how you define it. So sure. Sure. Yeah. I just <laughs> think you're a lot of pressure. That's not what I want to be. No, I love that. That was good. I'm not, <laughs> that could be the golden nugget of this whole, this whole thing. There, um, there you go. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about that uh, with coaches, you know, there's a, there might be a lot of charging files uh, if the guy's uh, a football coach and he's get some folks on the court. Um, what, what's the difference between a trainer and a coach? I think you might have mentioned a little bit when you said consultant, but what do you think is the difference between a trainer and a coach? I'll mix the two. Yeah. Because training is going to be content. Okay. But then good training is going to move in to them practicing the content, to them practicing the principles, trying out a new swing or whatever that might be, and then questions will follow in there. When I did training with Bell South Institute, Leadership Institute, I usually had 12 people over three days, uh, eight hours a day. And so we did a lot of, we, we did obviously some training, but then we were doing physical metaphors to deepen that. We'd do movies that would deepen the understanding. Every angle we could go out of way a person learned, we would do that just so it wasn't ending up being an information dump. Because what we know is information dumps don't work. Mm-hmm. I mean, they do. Some people are really sharp and they can take information, but they're on the, the far end of that bell curve where it's just very few, 3%, I think it is, where able to just take information and create something out of it. That's good. Thank you for that. And so before we get into the cool stuff where people get to learn more about you, where to get this awesome, smart ask <laughs> book. Um, yeah, make sure you pronounce that K. 
Oh yeah, man. It's in there. <laughs> Tell me about for you. This is, this is going to be a fun one, but I know you got a ton of them and you're open to share, which I appreciate about you. Tell me about an epic leadership fail that you've had personally and how you've rebounded from it. All right. I was at church in the Springs and uh, we had done culture training and I said, uh, feedback is I talk about the three A's, right? The right attitude, the right audience. And you always bring alternatives. You just don't point out what's wrong. And so I'd done that training. One of the guys was just a bright, sharp guy, one of the best connections pastors in the country, Thomas Pesto. I went by his office and he was in a meeting and I had something hit my brain that I needed to tell him to fix. So I opened the door. I said, I'm sorry for inter interrupting, but Thomas, Hey, we got to fix this. This didn't work well last week. And I said, sorry for the interruption. Left and went down to my office. Didn't think about it. And Thomas comes in my office to test me. I mean, because I've been talking about all this, I'm ready for feedback. He said, Hey, can I give you some feedback? I said, sure, man. What's up? He said, uh, when you stuck your head in my door, I had a meeting going on with four leaders and you gave me correction without any context. And I got to tell you, it knocked me off my game. And I said, and he, then he quoted me. He said, you missed the audience on that one of your three A's, attitude, audience, and alternative. I went, Thomas, absolutely, bro. I apologize for that. Thanks for coming in and, and lifting me up on that. I'm going to pay more attention to that. But I mean, that's, gosh, you, if you're going to be a leader, you're going to have to understand you don't get everything right. But I want to be able to feedback so I don't get it wrong again, at least for that person, right? So I've had that happen. I have uh, been upset in meetings before and lost the whole attitude edge and had to apologize for that. The hardest thing, my son was, uh, he'll, he'll tell you he was one, but he was probably four years old. We were in, in our master's level work. And we had an apartment there and he'd colored on the wall with some crayons. Not unusual for a four year old, right? Right. So I talked to him and I lectured him. Uh, really important, right? Four year old, nobody listens to a lecture, much less a four year old. So I think I've got him fixed. I tell Sandy, I think I fixed it. He's not going to do this again. Uh, so I leave and uh, leave, I go to work, whatever. Two days later, I come in and there he is. There's crayons on the wall again. He's picking them up off the floor. I don't see Sandy yet, but I'm not going to wait. I go, how? Yes, sir. I said, you wrote on the wall again, but that, I said, no buts. I told you when this happened, you're going to pick them up. Now pick them up. And I swatted him on the butt. And when he, it wasn't that hard of a swat, but when he cried, it was much more than a regular cry. And I thought, something's up here. About the same time Sandy walks in the apartment, she hears how crying. She goes, what happened? I said, well, your son. <laughs> I know that. When I yeah. walked in the door, was coloring on the wall again. I had him put those up. I swatted him on the butt and sent him to his room. She said, great job, and then paused, at which point I knew there was information that I didn't know that would be very helpful to the situation. And she, I said, what do you mean? She said, well, actually, it was Billy from downstairs. He colored on the wall. Hal came and told me. I just took Billy home. I was picking up the crayons, so you punished the kid who actually fell. So you know, I'm apologizing to a four-year-old. So I've I've offended four-year-olds and forty-year-olds. It doesn't matter. I'm an equal opportunity offender, right? Can I have your permission to text Hal after this and ask him about this scenario? That's, oh yeah. It, now he remembers things. You, you, what you got to know about Hal? He couldn't remember to take the trash out at fifteen. So I don't trust his recall of my mistakes. I mean, we, you know, we have fun now. We get together. I use, I use a lot of humor and teasing. And so now my kids come at me and some of the stories they tell, I, they did not happen that way, but that's how they remember them. So yeah, you probably get even a better perspective. He that's tells good. me he parented himself. Uh, he raised himself. He didn't need myself. So he's well, fun. I will be texting him. Um, <laughs> hey, so <laughs> telling me he's famous now. I will. So this is fun. I mean, you, you got to be a proud pop. I know you are, man, to see your son as he, as he preaches and teaches and leads. Yep. And I've learned stuff from him, too. And I look up to him. And you, too. That's because you're much taller than me. But um, in all seriousness, man, <laughs> I, I appreciate you guys and appreciate the Mayor family. Appreciate you being on the podcast. Tell, tell some folks 
where they can find out more about you. And while you're doing that, I'm going to flash some things on the screen so they can see it while you're talking about it. All right. Uh, if you'll go to howmare.com. Boom. Uh, that's the picture of the site there right now. You can get there and scroll through. Uh, if you go to my Instagram account, all my accounts are LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram, and Twitter, or slash howmare, H-A-L-M-A-Y-E-R. I've got a LinkedIn account. In fact, it's LinkedIn slash Hal Mayer, and you'll find all the links for all the stuff I'm doing. My book link is there on that site. Uh, I've got some podcast, not podcast, excuse me. I've got some training I've done, videos that they'll send you over to my uh, YouTube site and things like that. But they can find out there. Of course, my email is Hal at HalMayer.com. Not a tough one to remember. I'm going to see if I can sell that URL to my son in a few years. I don't know if he'll <laughs> pay for it or not. He's got Very the same cool. name, right? He's yeah. the fourth and his son's the fifth. Nice legacy there. So, And there's the book, too. Tell us about the book one more time and where they can get it. Yeah, It's a short book. That's the beauty of it. I, I write for men, and that doesn't mean I think men are better. It's I think they won't read long books because I don't. So it's about a 50-page book. It's on Amazon. You can get it in Kindle or you can get it in uh, uh, print format, paperback. Somebody asked me if I have an audible version. I don't. And you don't really don't want to hear me reading for a couple hours anyway. So uh, <laughs> that's there, uh, and, and they can find those things there. But videos of me preaching, some of me teaching, doing some leadership stuff for there on the YouTube site as well. And all of it's Hal Mayer. There's another Hal Mayer that's a pastor out there, but uh, very different vein than me. And uh, not as good looking. Find me, and, well, he may be better looking, but <laughs> he's he's old timey preacher guy. So. Probably not the same voice I have. Gotcha. Well, hey, it's a, it's a pleasure and a privilege, my friend. Thanks for investing into me and investing into others and allowing us. It's cool how it, it uh, comes full circle for us to do this here on the podcast. Appreciate you being here. Well, Brian, I'm excited to be a part of this. Thanks for the invite. I uh, I didn't realize you'd invite me to do this. I think I sent you a copy of the book. And yeah, man. it's just fun to get an opportunity to talk about it somewhere else. And, you know, <laughs> The, like the principle fun. of generosity is huge. And you're that guy that's generous because you're using your platform to platform other people. Mm. And you're becoming more of a curator than the know-it-all. And curators today, I think, have much more value because they can send you the resources. And that's what you're doing with your mm. podcast, highlighting resources and all. So I thank you for that, man. Yeah, thank you, brother. Appreciate you. God bless you. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, man. You got it, man. Wow, what a great podcast, my friends. An amazing resource that How Mayor is, has been to me and now is to you. And of course, I hope and pray that all these lessons you learned today will guide you personally and professionally. And you don't just keep them to yourself. You get to share them with others because that's what living on purpose is all about. So I hope today you got more insight into knowing, living, and loving your purpose. Again, I'm Brian Horvath and thankful for you being a part of today's show. Oh, mm-hmm.